This week, Seema Jain, CEO of Save a Global, and I will chat about how Walmart is helping fight racial inequality, how Marriott is increasing the diversity of their franchisees, a new initiative for athletes who are moms, and more. Hey there, my name is Bernadette Smith. Welcome to Five Things in 15 Minutes, my weekly show where I bring good vibes to DEI. That is good vibes to diversity, equity, and inclusion with a little dash of corporate social responsibility. What I've found is that there are lots of news stories about what's going wrong in the world and lots of negative data, but there are also a lot of things going right. That's what I like to focus on. I search for DEI stories that we can be inspired by and learn from. My hope is to inspire you to experiment with some of these inclusive actions and policies within your own organization to help you build a more inclusive world. Let's get started. Seema, will you please introduce yourself? Hi, absolutely. Well, thank you, Bernadette, for that great introduction. I love getting your newsletters. And for those of you who don't, you must subscribe. This is my favorite Saturday morning. Reading time is Bernadette's good vibes. Like she says, she's here to focus on the positives. There's enough negative in the world. So she brings out the good stories that make you feel good to know that there are companies doing it right. Bernadette and I have known each other for several years. I attended one of her LGBTQ wedding workshops many years ago, and we've worked together as she has launched more DEI initiatives. I've started working on cultural competency. Some of you might wonder what cultural competency is, but simply stated is, how do we work with people effectively of different backgrounds? Today, you work with people on your teams or your vendors or your customers that don't look like you, may not be like you. So we want to make sure that we work with them in a way that helps us all achieve things successfully together. So as DI has many unbiases, um, we learn unconscious bias training. We have cultural biases too, things that we sometimes don't realize that we're thinking about when we think of an Indian like me, for example, or a Chinese person or Brazilian or German. But these are all types of biases that we have. I'm not saying we can eliminate all of them, but our goal between Bernadette and I is to help you minimize them and to understand that we are making them, we are human beings, but how do we make them to the minimal that we can? So we've been fortunate to work together, Bernadette, over these years. And I love the stories you had on Saturday. So let's get started. Awesome. Thank you so much, Seema. And uh, I, I'm so glad you are a referral partner. You are a great fit for our clients and the work we do complements each other really well. So it's uh, it's great to know you all these years. Okay. So yeah, let's get started. Uh, last year, last week, I should say, I wrote about how I had attended a, a two-day mastermind workshop with other business owners like myself. And one of the things that we worked on in the workshop was a session on how to respond to triggers. Now, emotional triggers could be comments, microaggressions we experience, but how do we respond to triggers that we get in the workplace verbally, verbal triggers? And so the tool that we learned was actually a physical tool, some breathing, some grounding, some other things to help us actually have our body help out our mind when we are triggered. Now, I talk about this because there are a lot of folks who are triggered now that Roe versus Wade has been overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court. And I think it's really important for companies to step up and be prepared to have these conversations. Some of the things that I mentioned that are should be on every company's, every organization's radar could be programming, like listening sessions. I know a lot of organizations held listening sessions after George Floyd was murdered. Consider hosting listening sessions again. Consider mm-hmm. revisiting your employee benefits, your privacy policy, your both your internal and external communications. There should be some communications about this. There are a lot of business implications, and that's something I'm going to focus on in the next newsletter, but I wanted to bring it up today. Seema, this is just strange times we're in. Absolutely. I feel we've just reversed so many years of work and gone backwards. And who knows what's next after that, if this is the first one. But I agree with you, Bernadette. 
letting people know that it's okay not to be okay is appropriate. And having town halls, times for people to collect and share their thoughts and feelings is good for mental health, for emotional well-being on a topic that is very sensitive to many, especially women around the world, but even many uh, males too. So I think it's great if companies do encourage this and not, you know, put it behind, talk about something and let others react however they wish to react, whether it's with anger, whether it is, they just want to be silent, but listening. But I think it is a topic that is affecting many people today. And, you know, it is tough, especially for the younger generation. That's like, what just happened here, you know, type of thing. So it's, it's a tough topic and it's hopefully not the beginning of others. Hopefully this was just one, but let's see what happens now. So I agree with you talking about it is definitely going to be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And for anyone who's watching or listening, if you are really proud of what your company is doing, what policy mm-hmm. you've put in place, something that you've already seen or read, um, anything, any com- communication that you just think is really powerful, please share that with me so that we can share it with uh, with the readers, listeners, and viewers of Five Things. We like to focus on what's positive here and what's going right. And, you know, sharing the stories of how companies are responding in a positive way is definitely something that um, aligns with our purpose here. Okay, so let's look at the first story from this week, Seema. Allison Felix, who is an Olympic athlete, a gold medalist, a runner, she has launched a new initiative to provide free childcare to athletes, coaches, and staff at the U.S. Track and Field Championships. And her sponsor, Athleta, is actually sponsoring the program. Together, they've given out grants of more than $200,000 to help these folks pay for childcare. Um, and it's a pretty amazing program. It is. Absolutely. First of all, kudos to her and Athleta for putting this together. Love Athleta. It's one of my favorite stores. But you know what's interesting, Bernadette? I never even thought of this because not being a Olympic medalist or an athlete to that level, it's not something that you and I may have personally thought of that it impacts. But I'm so proud of her for taking this initiative and realizing that it is something that could stunt her career if she doesn't have or other athletes don't have the appropriate childcare to do so. And I love that organizations like Athleta are supporting, are providing the monies so that they can continue on into their career. No different than a football person, you know, maybe having an injury or something, right? It's it's limiting them. So what do we do to help them at times? But I love that they are doing things like this, that they're recognizing that in order for her and other athletes to go further in their career, they need a little help. And that's what they're doing here. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, honestly, athletes are there unless they have big sponsorships, they do not earn a lot of money. Right. Um, You know, NFL, Mm. (laughs) NFL players earn a lot more than (laughs) women runners. Um, But absolutely. It's uh, you know, this is a huge, huge benefit. And you're right. It does reduce that barrier and helps provide Mm -hmm. these athletes with just the opportunity to keep earning, keep playing. It's fantastic. And Allison Felix has really done a lot for pregnant women and mothers who are athletes as part of her sort of, she's retiring. So it's part of her passion project now. Okay. Next story is from Marriott, your, your former employer, which has a a new bridging the gap program designed to diversify its franchisees by providing them with some capital. Pretty cool. Yeah, it is great. So it's funny. I had two friends reach out to me a couple of weeks ago asking about the program. So I connected them with the right people. And of course, Marriott is, um, you know, a company I'm very proud of. They've done great work in this space. And I love to see the hospitality industry, amongst other industries, doing good work to help, again, bridge that gap, right? Giving opportunities. So these were two Indian women who were also trying to get in, developing their own hotels, and listening and learning from the program. I think the most important part for any hotel company when they do these is to also realize like, what is your scope? How much are you actually helping? And to lay out a really good plan so that if the woman who's coming in or the, you know, um, a black person, indigenous people, whoever it is that is seeking that knows exactly what they're getting into. Is it A through Z or is it just these few items? 
But I think if the program is laid out extremely well, they will know what the expectations are, and that's going to help as well. So I've seen other companies do it. I think this is great initiative by Marriott. It's a question of, you know, how much is that help of handholding versus here's what we can do on a financial basis. And I think when I see things like this, I'm very proud, Bernadette, that companies are doing it. I hope in general, in any company, that they're doing it for the right reasons, not just because everybody else is doing it, but they generally want to do this and help bring the social disparity down a little bit. So, you know, I think all these companies are doing a great job. It's just a matter of making sure they're doing it for not just the checkbox, but really for the holistic picture of the whole thing. And I'm sure Marriott is doing it for the right reasons, but I want to make sure that any company that does it, does it for the real true intention of the purpose. Yeah, I think the the real important part here is not to, you know, hand out money, right? But to also provide Correct. some additional resources, programming and support to help these new franchisees become more successful. And I that's definitely mm-hmm. what this program does because you know, the, systemic racism has created an awful lot of barriers that black people in particular have to overcome. And these types of programs really do start to level the playing field. There is definitely a lot of work Correct. to do, but it it is uh, it's a start, right? Okay, next up this week, Google is allowing LGBTQ plus owned businesses like my own Mm -hmm. to tag their businesses in Google Maps. So now if I wanted to, which I don't have a storefront, so it doesn't really make sense for my business. But if I wanted to, I could actually go into my Google Maps profile, my business profile, and I could tag myself as an LGBTQ owned business. And users would then be able to search Google Maps by that term, LGBTQ-owned business. And so it it increases exposure of businesses like mine. Well, not exactly like mine, but businesses owned by people like me. Yes, I love it. When I saw this article, I was so happy because I thought about things that during Pride Month or any time of the year, if I wanted to support someone, how great is it that I could find out right away? who I could support. And especially when it's this particular June month, want to give back a little bit, want to help somebody. Absolutely. So I love that they've integrated this. I think they've had Latino, Black, veterans, different ways that you can identify. So I think it's great that they've taken it another step up and doing this. So kudos to them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, it's about expanding access. And in this case, it's expanding access to potential buyers. And Just make it easier for us to be found. So nice work, Google. Okay, next up is a a new policy by Walmart, which has been showing up in five things a lot lately. Walmart's new policy is designed to reduce the racial health disparities experienced by Black women, Black mothers. Um, There's a much higher rate of mother mortality. And so they're providing a doula stipend. I think it's $1,000 for associates yes. in several U.S. states as part of medical benefits. So doulas are amazing, um, really helping mothers and parents have a better experience giving birth. Yeah. And I love it. I think Illinois is one of those states too, Bernadette, that it came yeah, through. I thought it was starting with Louisiana. Oh, was it? It was Louisiana, and then I think it was um, a couple other states in there as well. Awesome. But I thought it said Illinois, but love that $1,000 can go a long way. And love the fact that they're looking at a woman's entire well-being. Mm-hmm. And from pre-birth to birth, postpartum, it's a lot. And especially with COVID times, it really did trigger some other you know, uh, emotional needs as well. So I think it's great. I know other companies are doing it as well. And I think it's great that Walmart is trying to help the woman have a better experience, right? This is a lot to take in for a woman when you don't have a support structure. So to have that doula is going to be great. Even if it's not a lot, it's a little bit towards helping them achieve a better experience when having a baby. Yeah, I think it's actually going to go. (laughs) I think that stipend is going to go a long way in those states, actually. And I think it's a really important program because it really does. It's really about the overall health of the employee. Right. And and keeping people alive like this is it's literally a matter of life or death. And uh, I think it's a, a fantastic program. 
similar yeah. but different is a, pro a new program by Walgreens, which is also designed to reduce the racial health disparities. In this case, some of the problems that come up when there's a lack of diversity in clinical trials, because mm -hmm. what Walgreens is doing is they're allowing, they're, they're offering up their stores in 9,000 stores as a host location for clinical trials for new medicine and, and medical devices as a way to increase the diversity of the people in those programs. Because historically, mm -hmm. people who are participating in clinical trials for drugs and medical devices have to go to places like universities and major hospitals. Right. And it means that a lot of the people in those clinical trials are, it's a pretty homogeneous group. Absolutely. hundred percent. I think it's a great initiative. Like you said, pharmaceutical companies probably have a homogenous group that they work with when they use those traditional methods of clinics, hospitals, universities, things like that. But opening it up to the stores where Walgreens has what over 9,000 locations there's so much more now that's going to help bring a, probably a better, truer representation of what they're actually looking for now. And I think it's great because it's easier access for everybody to get to a Walgreens store than to go anywhere else and take time away. So I think it's great. I think this is going to be better statistics for the pharma companies as well and seeing a different perspective now that the true number of you know, respondents is going to be of a varied background. Exactly, exactly. And, and ultimately, this is about increasing, improving, mm -hmm. I should say, health outcomes. So always looking for the win-win. Good news for Walgreens. Good yes. news for the pharma industry. Good news for patients to come. So thank you so Absolutely. much for joining me today, Seema. It has been a pleasure having you here on Five Things in 15 Minutes. And for those of you watching or listening, really appreciate you being here with us today. Have a great week. All right. Thanks, Bernadette. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you for listening to Five Things in 15 Minutes. I hope you found yourself inspired by at least one of this week's stories. If you did, would you mind sharing it with a colleague and leaving us a review on your favorite podcasting platform? And if you don't already get my Five Things newsletter, join at fivethingsdei.com. I'm Bernadette Smith. And I'll see you next week right here for five things in 15 minutes, bringing good vibes to DEI.